In today's video, I'm hoping to be covering kind of the ins and outs of jewel orchid anatomy. So let's begin by talking about our first plant. This is a Ludicia spider-man and it is a great example of a jewel orchid cutting. Here is where the plant was cut from the mother plant, which has completely healed over. The healed region is known as callus. Most jewel orchids propagate readily from cuttings, so it's very typical for plants that you purchase to look similar to this. Jewel orchids have nodes and internodes. Roots or new shoots can grow from these nodes. In the case of this plant, new roots grew, which have anchored themselves to the media. Make sure to avoid ripping the media off as to not damage the roots. On this much larger Ludicia, we can better see how their leaves grow in a pattern known as a rosette. They all originate from one center point. Each leaf has this almost electric venation, which is why these orchids are so popular with collectors. This Ludicia is also a better example of how they are able to reproduce from each node. You can see the forking of the two stems. This one here was the original cutting, and this one is new and has grown to be this big in just under a year. This large branch is forming an inflorescence and is in bloom, which is crazy for me because less than a year ago it was just this tiny small nub. Jewels can bloom only once per branch or rosette, which is because the flower, which is also known as an inflorescence, is a terminal spike. This means that it grows from a center point of the plant rather than from the sides under the leaves like Phalaenopsis orchids. This also means that once the plant has bloomed, no more leaves will grow on the rosette. Jewel orchids also exhibit rhizomatous growth. It is in these thick stems here that they store carbohydrates. So you can think of these thick bulbous stems as a backup supply of water and energy. Here, just for a size comparison, is Makoti's Petala. I just wanted to show you guys how much larger the Ludicia discolor leaves are than this tinier Petala. Here are the blooms of the Ludicia discolor. You can see that from each of these flower bracts is a small white flower. Considering other orchids, some people find jewels to be somewhat underwhelming when they bloom, but I find them to be quite cute and dainty. It is also typical for people to cut the bloom spikes so that their plant stops dedicating energy to blooming and instead invests it into new growth, for new branches or roots. But I like to allow Mother Nature to take its course, and I always let the blooming process occur and conclude. The most common bloom color of jewel orchids happens to be white, but each flower tends to exhibit slightly different morphology, so that makes their blooms one of the easiest ways to actually identify the species of jewel orchid. So if you have the leaves and the blooms, you'll most likely get a pretty good identifier on what your jewel orchid is. In this close-up, you can make out some basic flower anatomy, including the flower bracts, petals, trichomes, which are these tiny little unicellular hairs, and then the whole thing is known as an inflorescence. This is a Makoti's petala. Typically, jewels are more prone to producing offshoots following blooming. This is due to a rush of hormones that accumulate at the node. This Makotis bloomed three months ago and as you can see has started producing what we refer to as basal growths, which just means that they're produced closer to the bottom of the plant where it meets the media. Something that I absolutely adore about Makotis is the sparkle in the leaves. This video does not do it justice, but if you own this plant you know exactly what I'm talking about. So that is all I have for today, but thank you guys so much for watching and I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments.